Obviously, the news recently is SAB Miller's announcement of a Greenfields brewery in Nigeria. They're investing about 100 million US dollars. Is that going to shake things up? Can you repeat the question, Narato? SAB Miller's new brewery that's uh, valued at about $100 million in investment. Is it going to create dynamism for them? Uh, of course. It, it, will, it will obviously create a lot of traction. As you know, uh, they're currently invested in uh, Papot, which uh, has a capacity of about 500,000 hectoliters. This new, uh, this new investment will also uh, uh, be to, to raise about 500,000 hectoliters, so bringing a combined capacity to about a million uh, in total. All right. Now, the interesting phenomenon is that SAB Miller effectively uh, is quite a dominant player in Africa. It's the second largest brewer on the continent. But in Nigeria, it's struggling to gain traction with just about 5% market share. What are the difficulties and the challenges that they face in Nigeria? Well, I think to start with, they only just opened up in Nigeria. It's just less than two years old. And uh, that obviously was Padpod. And Padpod itself you know, was a struggling brewery. In fact, they only just... Uh, rehabilitating the brewery and uh, I, I believe right now it produces uh, slightly less than 150,000 hectoliters a year and I think it will take quite a while before they can reach utilization uh, in, in that brewery and I think that's also what's motivated the company to build a new facility uh, in Onitsha also around uh, South South Nigeria. But can they take on the Giants, DOJ's Guinness, Heineken which already has five major acquisitions? They can, but it will, it will definitely take some time. I don't expect them to achieve uh, even a 10% market share over a, a five-year period. It will obviously take a lot more. In my opinion, probably even 20 years. Uh, the Guinnesses and the Nigerian breweries owned by uh, Diageo and uh, Heineken, respectively, have been here for you know almost uh, half a century, and they, they understand the market very well. I don't really think that is uh, SAB's Miller, uh, SAB Miller's uh, strategy at this point. I don't think they plan to go into Nigeria aggressively. I think they want to understand the market uh, gradually, and that's why they're basically mm -hmm. looking to scale up. Uh, you know, gradually, obviously, uh, at one million hectoliters by the end of 2013. That is very small to compete with the likes right. of Guinness and Nigerian breweries with install capacity of about uh, 6.5 and uh, uh, 12 million hectoliters, respectively. What does it mean to understand the Nigerian market? I mean, I've been to Nigeria. I'm not a beer drinker, but I do know that Nigerians have their favorites, and it's not any one of the SAB brands. So just penetrating that market and trying to introduce new products, are the Nigerian consumers open to that? Well, it's, it's usually very tough. To give you an example, uh, on-trade sales represents the bulk of uh, distribution of beer today, so uh, around about 80%, and this is typically distribution through clubs, you know, bars, uh, e even though they are, they are kiosks, you know, where sort of low-income earners get to sit down to, to enjoy uh, a bottle of beer with their friends. Now, if I were you know, a bar owner, a club owner, it's very unlikely that I'll go out to the market, you know, to buy a fresh brand that my, my customers or clients, you know, don't know much about. So I think it's, an, it's something that SAB Miller would generally have to drive for years, maybe about the three-year period, you know, encouraging mm -hmm. uh, bar and club owners to push those products. I think that in the meantime, uh, off-trade, which is basically in grocery stores, would obviously help support. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think that it will obviously take a lot of time before they break uh, the key on trade, mm -hmm. on trade market where uh, Nigerian breweries and Guinness are very strong. Where SAB is very active in, other, in about 18 other African uh, markets, they operate on a policy of using 80% local content. I don't know whether they're doing that in Nigeria, but if they do that, is it not going to unlock supplier opportunities within the value chain, uh, create just new enterprise around the brewery? With Nigeria, it's, I think it's a different case. Uh, with markets like uh, in, 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 in East Africa, for example, Tanzania, Kenya, uh, where they have a presence, uh, there's obviously some production of barley there, for example, which is very, very important in the production of beer. In the case of Nigeria, we, we don't produce barley, so it's likely they'll continue to import uh, uh, other, either malted barley or barley which they malt here locally. Uh, it's very, very unlikely that they produce pure sorghum beer. Uh, I mean, there are a number of breweries locally that have tried that, but I think that it's met a failure at the marketplace mm -hmm. because, you know, sorghum-based beers are, are really sharp, you know, uh, on the tongue. So <laughs> uh, I don't think that would be the strategy. I think even Nigerians by nature like 
uh, high quality beer. So I think it's going to be largely barley based, and uh, the prices will obviously re right. reflect the price of uh, of, of, of uh, internationally priced barley. Uh, more so, I think the market is big enough for uh, both SAB Miller, Nigerian breweries, and Guinness to uh, to compete in. It's it's you know I'd be surprised if they. Right. They, uh, they go out on a war, as we've seen in Kenya, for example, right. or even in Tanzania, or even Ghana. I think the reason why those markets, you've seen such tense competition in those markets, is because I think the government has basically uh, raised the, the bar by, by increasing uh, excise duties. Mm -hmm. So what, what that obviously has translated to is lower demand for their products, mm -hmm. and so they, they basically have to fight each other. And so we've seen price cuts, for example, in Tanzania, that have led to uh, you know uh, very, very intense competition amongst beer producers. Okay. I, I think that that wouldn't happen in, in the case of Nigeria. I think that in terms of pricing, uh, Nigeria would definitely represent right. uh, one of the largest uh, countries in the world in terms of profit pools, and that is why SAB Miller is very interested in this market. And so I don't expect intense competition as we see elsewhere like East Africa.